In the 18th and 19th centuries in the UK, there was a rather morbid but prosperous industry that gripped the towns. Resurrectionists or body snatchers were employed by physicians to exhume the bodies of the recently deceased. Their bodies would then be used by anatomists to study their body and research. At the time there was actually very few dead bodies available, and there was a demand for cadavers for the experimentation and anatomical studies. Because of this shortage, body snatching was rife in towns and cities, especially those such as Edinburgh, which gained a notable reputation for anatomy. These bodies would then be brought to the universities and surgeons, who experimented and paid the grave robbers handsomely. Two of the most famous men who took advantage of this rather morbid practice was Burke and Hare, two murderers who willingly sold bodies for huge profit. However, instead of digging up bodies, they took matters into their own hands. Because of this industry, there was a great fear at the time of body snatching, and those who were dying, or the families of the deceased, went to great lengths to prevent this from happening. So join us today as we look at the incredible story of the Mort Safes, the large cages to protect someone from the body snatchers placed onto graves. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Resurrectionists as the grave robbers were known, had supplied schools of anatomy within the UK from the early 1700s, and there was a need for medical students to learn about anatomy by watching dissections of humans. Before one criticism of medicine was that animals were dissected, and there was an assumption by some that animal bodies and humans were identical. The government at the time tended to ignore the morbid practice, as surgeons were attempting to further medicine, and to develop medical knowledge. However, within towns and cities, there was great fury when people found out about grave robbing. For example, there were riots, and even people suspected of being a body snatcher were murdered in violent attacks. Because in the early 1800s, more medical students attended and more medical schools opened, the demand for dead bodies and cadavers skyrocketed, and the industry and amount of people participating in this industry went up. There were even allegedly fights in graveyards over dead bodies, as different grave robbers were trying to steal the same recently buried body to make a large profit. In particular in Scotland, this was a key industry, and within Edinburgh the practice of grave robbing happened a large amount. The Scots believed in resurrection, and that the body could not ascend to heaven if it was not whole, and it was thought that those in town stealing bodies were preventing judgement and God's will. The Scottish law at the time said how bodies could be used of those who had died in prison, taken their own life, and orphans were allowed to be dissected. Murderers had also been subject to dissection for a while too. In warmer weather decomposition happened quicker, so in summer many graveyards under the cover of darkness were filled with men, exhuming recently deceased victims. People took necessary precautions to protect the graves of friends and family members who had recently passed away. Only the rich were able to afford huge vaults, mausoleums or heavy granite tombstones, which were more difficult for the body snatchers to break into. People also planted heather and branches from trees into the soil to make the practice more difficult. Friends and families would even hire watchmen to keep an eye on the graves throughout the night, and there are examples of watchtowers and watching societies being formed in Scottish towns. In fact, the Glaswegian society had around 2,000 members. Despite these watches going on, there were still many graves which were violated, and the remains were stolen and then sold to the universities. One of the most genius ways of preventing the body snatchers was a mort safe, which was invented in around 1816, to make grave robbing practically impossible. These were cages made from iron or stone, and they weighed a huge amount and had different designs. The iron rods and plates that were padlocked together formed a barrier in a cage around the grave, and this made it impossible for someone to dig a space into the grave and steal the remains. Now the mort safe initially was not a permanent feature, but many can still be seen in graveyards today. Sometimes the church brought a mort safe and loaned them out to the families of the recently deceased, and the cage would be placed over the newly buried person. After around six weeks, the mort safe would then be carefully extracted again, and then moved to a different grave as the body had sufficiently decayed and the body would not be of any use to a surgeon. Mort safes did come in a number of different shapes and sizes, the most common ones are iron cages, erected above a grave and placed on top, but there were other concrete or iron structures made to prevent someone putting a spade into the soil and extracting human remains. They all had something in common, 
the fact they were incredibly heavy. In fact, one of them found in a churchyard in a village near to Edinburgh is just simply an iron box placed on top of a body. Two people held different keys to the mort safe to ensure that no one could release the cage without the other one agreeing to. When a grave was dug, the coffin would be placed inside and then a plate was placed on top. This plate had a number of holes on the side and the iron rods of the mort safe slid through the holes and then another plate was placed on top. The effect of this was that the coffin was caged and the body was sealed in, allowing the body to decay peacefully. Grave robbers, however, were rather crafty and skilled, and they went to great lengths to try and defeat the mort safes and take the bodies. For example, sometimes they dug huge holes 20 feet away from the grave they wanted to rob, and they would then tunnel from the hole to the coffin, drag the coffin out of the tunnel, and remove the body horizontally. No one would notice that the grave had been robbed and that the body had been taken as there was no damage, except the huge hole nearby. After the crimes of Burke and Hare had come to fruition and became common knowledge, there was a heightened sense of panic and fear with those who had recently lost relatives. For this reason, mort safes became more common, and vaults began to be built, also for the dead bodies, as they could be buried in greater safety. Some of these were underground, and some were actually above ground. For example, one of these mort houses in Aberdeenshire had a turntable to hold seven coffins. A coffin would then be moved once it had no use for resurrectionists and the decay process had set in, and after a period of time this would be swapped out for a new coffin. Pretty much all of the local communities near Scottish schools of medicine in towns, such as Edinburgh, Aberdeen and Glasgow, made some attempt to prevent grave robbing, either using watches, mort safes and vaults. The government passed the Anatomy Act of 1832, which eventually gave free licence to doctors and teachers of anatomy, and qualified medical students to dissect bodies which were donated. This act came around after the disgust of the industry of body snatching, and in particular the crimes of Burke and Hare in Edinburgh, who murdered 16 people to sell their corpses to respected anatomist Robert Knox for his lectures. Because of this act, it made the industry of body snatching basically obsolete, and it died out along with the desire for mort safes. As mentioned, there are a number of mort safes still around which you can see, for example, two are located in the incredibly eerie and haunting Greyfriars Kirkyard in Edinburgh, and these show the lengths that people went to protect dead bodies. It's incredibly sad, however, that people had to do this, that there was such an underground need to steal bodies to make profit. Today it's an incredible story, and the mort safes are a gloomy reminder of the requirement to prevent grave robbers and body snatchers intent on disrupting the dead to simply make money. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.